Hello, my name is David Clark and I'm from the Developer Technologies Group at Adobe Systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you Adobe Creative Suite Extension Builder. In the last video, I showed you how to use Extension Builder to create a simple Photoshop extension in under five minutes. And in this video, I'm going to go through much the same process. However, I'm going to take a much more in-depth look at all the features of Extension Builder. And I'm going to show you more ways in which it can accelerate your extension development. So as before, you can see I'm currently running Flash Builder 4 with the Extension Builder plugin installed. And so to create a new extension project, I go to File, New, Creative Suite, Extension Project. And this time, let's try creating an InDesign uh, extension. So we'll, go, we'll call our project Demo InDesign. And uh, Extension Builder generates a menu name and a uh, extension ID for us. Now we click Next and we're presented with a list of applications we can target so let's select InDesign and you'll notice that these applications are split into two categories. There's those with CSO libraries and those without and what CSO library stands for is Creative Suite Action Script Wrapper Library and these libraries are available with the CS SDK and they basically allow you to interact with the scripting DOM of an application in ActionScript. So within Design, we're going to use ActionScript for all of our scripting code. Uh, if I click Next, we can change the appearance of our extension panel, change things like the minimum, maximum, width, and height. Well, I'll just leave those as defaults for now. Say I was to enter an invalid character in any of these fields, so for example, enter an alphabetic character under minimum height, I get an error message in the top of the wizard telling me that that character is invalid. So that can be quite useful in preventing errors before they happen. Finally, I can edit my application's main MXML file's name, or I can tell Extension Builder to put all my uh, source code into a package for me. But for now, let's just click Finish. And as you'll have seen in the last video, a very simple skeletal project is generated. And we have this main.xml file. And all it contains is a single button which says run in design code. And when we click that button, this run function in this class is going to be executed. So at the moment, all that does is it gets a handle on the root of the InDesign scripting DOM. Uh, so before we run this extension, let's just try writing a little bit of code that uh, interacts with InDesign. So let's say we want to uh, add a new document to InDesign and then enter a text frame into that document and give that text frame some content. Well, we do that using the InDesign Creative Suite Action Script Wrapper Library. So firstly we get a handle on the documents collection, add a new document to it. Then we want to get a handle on all the text frames inside the document and add text frame to that. And you'll notice that all the time I'm writing this code, I'm getting features like code hinting, autocomplete, and helpful inline action script documentation, which tells me the exact meaning of all these methods and properties. Uh, let's set the geometric bounds on this shape. And finally, we'll give it some content. And let's just display hello world from extension builder. I save that, and so now we can debug our extension and check it works. And if you saw the last video, you'll have seen that I right-click the project, and I can go to Debug As Adobe InDesign Extension, and what that does is it launches InDesign for me, and I can run my panel from within InDesign in debug mode. But in this video, I want to show you this alternative Attach As debugging workflow, and you'll see it's marked as beta because it doesn't work for all Suite applications yet. However, it works for InDesign, 
And what it's going to allow us to do is, because I've already got InDesign running, it's going to allow me to debug my extension in InDesign. And you'll see where I'm in design. I'm running in design at the moment. And I'll be able to debug this extension as many times as I like within the single lifecycle of the InDesign application. So let's just go ahead and click the run in design code button in our extension panel. And you'll see that as before, Flash Builder tells me that a debug uh, breakpoint has been hit and now we jump into the debug queue and we can step through each line of code line by line and as we do that we see variables uh, being populated and we can jump in and further inspect all the properties of those variables just as you'd expect when debugging something like an air application So let's just go back to InDesign. And sure enough, now that we've finished executing, we can see that the document's been created and it contains a text frame that says hello world from Extension Builder. I'll just zoom in on that there. So let's just hit that button again and we'll go through the same process and add another document and another text frame. And we'll step through the code as before. And this time, however, let's suppose that after I've executed the code, I actually decide I don't want my text frame to say hello world from extension builder. I just want it to say hello. Well, I can go to this variables view and look up the contents variable under text frame. And I can make a hot change to that value through the debugger. If I hit return, the contents are changed. Now if I go back to InDesign, you can see that the text frame contains hello. So I've actually been able to change a property in InDesign from the Flash Builder 4 debugger. Uh, let's say I want to make another change, so I want the bounds of my text frame to be different. If I make the change in my source file, stop debugging that instance of the application and go to attach as Adobe InDesign extension again, you'll see that the debugger connects and without having to restart InDesign, my panel opens up, my breakpoint gets hit as before. Let's remove that and just hit continue. And you'll see that the text frame is created at a different place in the document. So that demonstrates how easy it is to make changes inside Flash Builder 4, inside Extension Builder, and to run those changes inside of the host application uh, in really a very short space of time.